Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing United Airlines stock by analyzing its financial statements and dissecting its financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. United Airlines is headquartered in Chicago. It operates 4,900 flights a day to 362 airports across six continents. It is the third largest airline in the world. United has eight hubs, with Chicago O'Hare being its largest. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 13.7 billion market cap. They're trading at $47 a share, and they have 293 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you forecast the future free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video and free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow in 2017. They have lots of free cash flow in 2018 and 19, but a big negative in a trailing 12 months. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they have negative net income in a trailing 12 months, positive in three years. Revenue looks really good from 2017 to 2019. Then it's cut in half due to coronavirus in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue. Below that is the cost of revenue. So you can see in the trailing 12 months they had negative gross profit because their sales were cut in half due to low traveling during coronavirus. But in prior years they have healthy gross profit. They did a good job cutting their operating expenses to $2 billion from $8 billion but their operating income was negative 2.6 billion. Of course, it was much better in prior years. This company has a lot of debt, so they have a big interest payment on their debt. And they have a big negative in other income and expenses. This is due to restructurings and impairments. So they have negative 4.5 billion of net income, but you can see it was really good in prior years. This is a breakdown of their revenue from their 10K. So their passenger revenue was growing each year from 34 billion to 37 billion to 39 billion. Their baggage fees are pretty flat, 1.1 billion to 1.2 billion to 1.2 billion. This is their statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow, and this is capital expenditures. Capital expenditures are investments in property, plant, and equipment. So when they buy planes, that goes into CapEx. And the way you calculate free cash flow, it's operating cash flow minus CapEx. So they had negative 3.6 billion in the trailing 12 months, but they did have nice cash flow in 2019 and 2018. They did have a negative in 2017. They fund a lot of their business on debt. 2.8 billion in 2017, 1.7 billion, then 1.8 billion, then almost 14 billion in the trailing 12 months. This of course is concerning when investing in a company but I think once they get back to regular times, like they did in 2019 and 2018, they should be operating with healthy free cash flow again. But that may take another year to happen, and if it takes two or three years, they might not be able to make it that far. This is a breakdown of their operating cash flow, and you can see in Yahoo Finance, they don't break down the trailing 12 months, but they do break down the prior years. So you can see in 2019, they had three billion of net income, but seven million of operating cash flow, you could think of operating cash flow as the income statement converted to cash because you first take net income of three billion and then you add back the non-cash items that you pass through its expenses on the income statement like depreciation of 2.3 billion, deferred taxes of 888 million, and other non-cash items of 360 million. So if they bought a plane for 300 million dollars, they would pay for that plane up front, but then over 30 years, they would depreciate that plane and pass through expenses onto the income statement. So each year on the income statement, they may be reporting an expense for 10 or $20 million, but they do not actually pay 10 or $20 million. The payment for the plane was done years ago when they initially bought it. Let's look at a capital structure. $11 billion of equity, $20 billion of debt, and $15.5 billion of net debt. Net debt is total debt minus cash. They pay 3.9% interest on their debt, and cost of debt is 3%, and they are a bit leveraged. 64% of that capital structure is debt, which means 36% is equity. Cost of equity is 14.76%, and to calculate cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market, and their beta is 1.62. So the stock is a bit more volatile than the market, 
and their WAC is 7.24%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that $16.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $14.8 billion. We divide that by 293 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $51. They're trading at $47, so they're trading at an 8% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street's at $46, so they're saying the stock is trading at intrinsic value. So you can see the stock was doing really well for a few years. It's trading close to $90, but then it dropped in March. It has come up a little bit, but not too much. So it's trading at a pretty big discount relative to its all-time high. In the past 52 weeks, the stock dropped 45%, which is much worse than the S&P 500, which went up 15% in the same period. The 52-week low was 1780. The 52-week high was 9057. And the stock is currently trading above its 50-day moving average and 200-day moving average. When the 50-day is above the 200-day, that's considered a golden cross. That's a bullish sign for the stock. When the 50-day is below the 200-day, that's called the death cross. That's a bearish sign. The average three-month volume is 23 million, and the average 10-day volume is 20.6 million. This is the volume of shares that are traded in the market. If a stock is traded above 20 million shares a day, it's considered to have sufficient liquidity. And of the 293 million shares outstanding, almost all of them on float. That means the shares are available to the general public. And more than half of the shares are held by institutions. And 6% of the shares on float are shorted. I only get concerned when this number is above 20%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $19,000 today. That's a 91% return. Continental Airlines is the successor to Varney Airlines. In 1931, United Airlines formed a holding company for its airline subsidiaries. In 2010, Continental Airlines and United Airlines merged. Due to COVID, the company cut 36,000 jobs in July and another 16,000 jobs in September. This is a list of their employees. They have 24,000 flight attendants, 13,800 in fleet service, 12,000 in passenger service, 12,000 pilots, and many more. In 2017, the company used 4 billion gallons of fuel, spending $6.9 billion. That's $1.74 per gallon. 2018, they spent two and a quarter per gallon. In 2019, they spent 209 per gallon. And they used 4.3 billion gallons in 2019. The company has eight hubs in the United States, Chicago O'Hare, Denver, Guam, Houston, LA, Newark, San Francisco, and Washington. United uses the hub and spoke model, where newer airlines like JetBlue and Southwest use the point to point. The hub model saves a lot of money and is more efficient only if everything works out, but that rarely happens. So if you have eight flights that are going to the hub in Chicago, you might have New York, LA, San Francisco, Houston, eight flights from eight cities going to this hub in Chicago. And then all the people who get to Chicago, some will stay in Chicago, but others will connect to another flight, maybe to New York or to LA or to wherever. The problem is if there's delays in some of these hubs, some of these passengers don't catch their flight. So they have to be rerouted to a different flight. And then a delay in one flight could result in a delay in multiple flights. So the hub and spoke is a very inefficient model. The point to point works really well because if there's a delay in one flight, it doesn't affect the passengers for any of the flights. United has been a member of Star Alliance since 1997. The alliance lets multiple airlines get together. So United may bring a passenger to New York and a different airline may bring that same passenger to Mexico. The airlines work together so the passenger doesn't have to check in again or deal with their baggage at stopover. United also has co-chair agreements with many airlines. This is where one airline operates a flight, but all the airlines in the co-chair can market their flight to their customers. Let's look at the financial ratios. The average PE in the market is 12.3, the median is 14.8. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. 
Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 0.6, so they're doing much better than the median and average. This means investors are paying 60 cents for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 1.2, so they're doing much better than the median and average. The way you calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And their tangible equity is $4 billion. So they have a lot of intangible assets on their balance sheet, like goodwill and trademarks and patents. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. Negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They cannot cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are $5 billion of cash, $1.4 billion of receivables, and $1 billion of inventory. So in the trailing 12 months, they had negative $3.6 billion of free cash flow, and their working capital is negative $6.7 billion. So they're going to need a lot more debt to run the business next year. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on American, Air Canada, Alaska, Copa, Delta, Exchange, JetBlue, Southwest, Spirit, and SkyWest, all in the same industry as United. And if United has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse than PE because they're negative. They do have a better price to sales and price to book than the average. They're worse than current ratio, ROE, and debt. They are bigger than the average company at 13.7 billion market cap, average is 10 billion, and they don't pay a dividend. So to summarize, I do have them trading at an 8% discount, but this is assuming their business gets back to normal sometime in 2021 or 2022. If it does not, this company is going to really struggle, possibly go bankrupt. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.